Hi everyone, my name is Ryan with Hauer Power Electrical and today we're going to talk about the difference between DIY electrical and hiring a professional and with the rising cost of everything this seems to be more prevalent now than ever because everyone wants to try and save money and some things you should save money on and some things you should maybe hire a pro for but with electrical there's a little bit of gray area there for a lot of people so that's what we want to dive into today so we got some auto generated questions here and i'm going to answer them and as best i can and hopefully this can bring you some value today what are some basic electrical tasks that you believe are safe and appropriate for homeowners to diy safe and appropriate for homeowners to do themselves I mean, if you're killing the power, you can do just about whatever you want. At the end of the day, it is your home uh, and it is your insurance that's on it. But if something does go wrong, then it is your liability. So by the same stretch, how much would you be willing to invest your own money in your own stock portfolio plan? Um, that would be you gauging your own risk on your home too. So if you wanted to change out a whole panel and install a whole new panel, uh, big risk involved a lot of money involved and if it does burn down your house insurance would be null and void so i mean that's a pretty big risk if you're going to change out your plugs and your switches maybe a little bit less of a risk but again if you had a dead fault or an uh, overcurrent issue and your breaker didn't catch it um, then again you're right back to stage one with a fire so at the end of the day what's safe and what's appropriate for a homeowner to do it's really going to be at your own discretion but it depends on uh, the shock value too and, and your own level of competence. Uh, as with any trade, it's not rocket science, but I mean, I've done it for 20 years and at the end of the day, the trade does change every three years with the code. So with new code, with new products, with new services, with different plugs being wired different ways, know what you're getting into. If you can educate yourself, then I mean, judge yourself about how far you wanna go. How should homeowners assess the risk involved in a potential DIY electrical project? Well, I think it all comes down to dollars and cents at that point. Assessing your own risk is going to be really why you're in the first place here and wanting to do your own electrical is because of money. You want to assess how much you can save. So if you're going to assess the risk based off that dollar amount, if, uh, if you're going to try and do your own service upgrade, well, it might cost you four grand to hire someone to do it and what's going to be the dollar amount if you try to do it yourself and how much are you going to actually save also when you factor in your own time and and the risk of something going wrong and liability insurance not covering it so at the end of the day risk assessment bring it down to dollars and cents i'd say if you have a major renovation and you're thinking hey i'm gonna i'm gonna do xyz myself um, some things you might not want to do yourself some things you might want to do yourself so I'd say put it all on a spreadsheet. That's what we do for all of our clients' projects and see exactly where the dollars go and if it's gonna make sense to do it yourself, but play at your own risk. Can you discuss the essential tools and equipment that a homeowner should have if they choose to undertake simple electrical work? As far as tools and equipment, I mean, just about every electrician I know, they're gonna have a tool pouch. that's about 50 pounds loaded right up. Uh, whenever we pull up in our van, I mean, we probably got about 10, 15 grand of tools in that van before material. So at the end of the day, most people don't have 10, 15K to spend on a bunch of used tools. But for basic electrical tasks, you could probably get by maybe spending a thousand bucks on your basic hand tools to get by for what you want. I mean, you're gonna need an electrical meter, not just a tick tester, because that's gonna pick up on absolutely anything. Um, you don't want to put your life in a tool that's just gonna pick up static electricity. Uh, at the end of the day, you want an actual good quality electrical meter to test your voltage and maybe you pick one up for pretty cheap for 100, 150 bucks. Uh, but yeah, at the point of a, of a troubleshoot repair call out where that's 200 bucks, might, might be cheaper to hire a guy 10 times over than to spend all the money on the tools. What are the most common mistakes you see in DIY electrical projects and how can they be avoided? Oh man, this is a big one. So. We get so many callbacks for homes built in the last 20 years that had backstab outlets. So is it code compliant? Yes, it is. Is it going to last for 10 years? Probably not. But we made a business out of fixing these 
shortcuts done by general contractors and builders and electricians who just want to whip together home right quick. And uh, what a backstab is, is, on the back of your receptacle, you're going to have tiny holes that the wire can poke into. And uh, if you take that shortcut, expect it to fail because there's only really one right way of doing it and it's clockwise around the screw and that'll hold forever. But if you put it in the back of a hole, it's a compression fitting. Uh, it's just like shark bite. You know, at the end of the day, it's it's not good for plumbing, but it's the same concept for electrical wiring. It's a stab and hold. So that's one concept. At the end of the day, if you try to fix all those and you, you end up doing backstab connections, you're gonna have some pretty poor connections. Um, another one would be kitchen counter plugs. Uh, you can have 240 volt going to a plug with a shared neutral, but if you don't break that tab and you get line to line fault and your main breaker doesn't catch it, then the transformer that's powering up your house and five other houses, that's going to be what's catching it. And if Epcor has to come out because now you've caused an outage in your neighborhood, uh, they're not going to restore power to your home until it's signed off by a master electrician. And then things get really expensive and really messy when it might have only been a couple hundred bucks to hire an electrician to do it right the first time. What are the definitive signs that a homeowner should call a professional electrician instead of attempting a DIY fix? I'd say as far as a do-it-yourself fix, a good rule there would be if you have a lamp with a frayed cord and the cord end is maybe busted and you can just pick up a $2 cord end from Home Depot and throw that cord end on that lamp. There's not really a whole heck of a lot that you can really mess up there um, unless you get your hot and your neutral reversed. But at the end of the day, that would be a definitive example of uh, a DIY fix. Um, if it's going to deal with the electrical in your walls, an alteration of your existing electrical system, uh, adding plugs, adding lights, if it's going to have 120 volt going to it and you have the risk of a deadfault or a short or the risk of something being wired incorrectly, I mean, that could create an electrical fire. There's a reason why you want to hire someone with a license. Could you explain when electrical work might require a permit and why adhering to local codes isn't just a legal issue, but a safety one? I think it's rule 2002. I think it's maybe not the first one, but the second rule in the whole code book. It's about 400 pages and it's eight by 11 sheets and it's written by lawyers and it's uh, the driest book you'll ever read. But it uh, that rule does state any alteration, any work, any electrical being performed does require a permit. So at the end of the day, really by code, adding a plug requires a permit. Would the permit cost more than that plug? Yeah, absolutely it would. So it's kind of counterintuitive there at that point. If you think it's going to adjust the value of your home, or if you think it could be detected by someone that is adjusting the value of your home, for example, a home sale, then you should absolutely have a permit, especially if it's going to adjust the load of your home, such as an EV charger or a hot tub or an air conditioner. All of those are solid examples of something that you would definitely want a permit for, especially if you had a sub panel. Any sort of large electrical alteration to your home, even adding a circuit really could overload your system. If you're gonna add a, maybe a kiln, maybe a sauna, maybe a dryer, if you're gonna add something, even uh, geez, even a new kitchen reno, a secondary kitchen, even if it's still 120 volt plugs, that would need a permit as well. Any alteration needs a permit. How can homeowners evaluate the complexity of an electrical issue to decide whether it's within their DIY capabilities? Edmonton, this great city of ours, it's a blue collar town, right? A lot of, I think the majority of the people in this city are blue collar. So uh, evaluating the complexity of your own electrical issue, if you have to ask someone about that, you might not want to do that work yourself. But if you feel confident and knowledgeable and you've done this before or you have a really good understanding of it and you want to take that risk upon yourself, then by all means, go for it. But just know that it is your risk. And at the end of the day, it all comes down to dollars and cents. And if something does go wrong, um, we would rather you approach us and say, hey, you did all of this work and something went wrong and your insurance is now going to cover this. And while we've never had that happen, it's good to know that if someone's wiring your stuff, that you can turn around and sue them if something goes wrong. Otherwise, if you're responsible for it, you're kind of holding the bag. And that'd be a big bag to hold for just skimping out on, on a smaller job. What safety precautions should be non-negotiable for homeowners attempting to handle their own electrical repairs? That's a really good one. I think uh, any current that's gonna actually draw enough to stop the human heart that should be dealt with by a professional in that field. 
by the same stretch. I mean, if that's if that's the cost of your life, you wouldn't take a hundred grand that you have lying around and go invest it in your own stocks. You wouldn't go do your own <laughs> surgery on your ankle when you broke it. Uh, at the end of the day, I mean, well, we have we have public health care here, but if you can think of something that's a real big expense and a real big liability, uh, you want to hire a professional for that. Because if something goes wrong, again, it comes back to the dollars and cents of insurance. At the end of the day, we're all just trying to help each other out. But if something goes wrong, it's good to know that something's there that will protect you from going bankrupt. You can turn the power off all day. When you turn it back on though, I mean, if you hooked it up wrong and the breaker doesn't catch it, now it's up the line and you got bigger issues. What resources do you recommend for homeowners who want to educate themselves about basic electrical work? Uh, I think that would come down to books. That's about it, readers are leaders. And with all the stuff you find on the internet, um, including this, I mean, take everything with a grain of salt. You don't know how many lies are out there. You got YouTube videos, sure, but not everyone on there knows exactly what they're doing too. So I'd say, uh, I mean, if you really wanted to educate yourself, join the trade. Right? We're always looking for good quality, honest electricians. So um, subscribe up to Nate, book the program, book the course, get in. There's no better formal training you can get than that other than on the job experience. But if you are interested in doing electrical, then by all means, get started in the trade. That's, that's the safest way to do your own electrical. For someone hesitant to hire a professional due to cost concerns, what would you say about the value a professional electrician brings to an electrical project? Yeah, I mean, electrical is gonna tie everything together. Uh, if you can have good communication with your electrician and you can work through everything at the end of the day, I mean, every trade is gonna have its blunders, but if you can bring an electrician on that knows what they're doing with your project and respects what your project has to bring to the table, that's gonna be vital. At the end of the day, I mean, even a drywaller will help you out in a big way too, but for an electrician, everything comes, we're the first in, we're the last in, and we're in right in every little other stage too. So it, it ties in your air conditioning, it ties in your furnace, your ducting, it, uh, it's gonna tie in even to your plumbing in some scenarios. But at the end of the day, it, again, it comes down to the dollars and the cents of it. If you can see the value in your home and the insurance of your home and the sellability of your home and what it would cost if something went wrong, then you can see the value in an electrician to, to wire up your home.